with all this knowledge that you've given us, and what do you have for us today? And tell us uh, what's going on with you today, too. All right. Uh, Number one, uh, we've been having a lot of discussion in Detroit and around the country on the United Nations. I'm getting uh, emails that they're coming in the city. They'll be here on the 7th. 17th, 18th, and 19th of October, they'll be here. Now, there are several meetings being held prior to, and I can't give you all of those meetings, but I can tell you that there's one this Friday at at the Water Board Planning uh, meeting. Let me see, where is it at located? It's located at the Detroit, Greater Detroit Agency, for the blind and visually impaired. That's on Grand River, 16625 Grand River at Grand Mount. And they're having a meeting from 5.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. And they are going to discuss, I'm reading it as I speak to you, they're going to discuss the, the, um, uh, the, the complaints they want people to put in complaints on everything that they that's been happening in regards to the water channels. Okay, and as you know, a lot has been going on about the water off up to and including um, uh, neighborhoods. Children's services are coming in homes, taking the children away from the parents because they declaring the homes unfit to live. Because the water shut off, we're having we're having major major problems in that respect. So they're going to talk about it. The seniors are having problems getting around in regards to the water. They got to go out and find uh, these um, water shacks that they have set around the city to pick up their water. So transportation is a problem. So everything is kind of. Uh, up in up in arms right now, and it's coming to a head because the city is still moving forward with a few shutoffs. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make the one on Friday and uh, see what's happening, and then I'm going to be at the meeting when they show up. Now, okay. one more thing: if you're in the Detroit area, you can go online, and they have. Uh, you can Google United Nations complaint forms. You need to get those complaint forms filled out. So if you're going to go to one of the meetings or going to one of the places that are having the meeting, you want to turn your complaints in prior to them showing up. Okay. Okay. That's, That's very important. Now, number two, the killing we had back in 2011, I believe that date was 2011, when the uh, Ayanna Jones young lady was murdered by yeah. the police department who was um, uh, uh, filming the 48-hour TV series or attempting to film it. I don't, I'm not sure. But the bottom line is uh, they were found that there were not, not enough charges to proceed forward hung jury trial, previous hung jury trial. So I believe that this guy, Sergeant Weekly, who shotgun shot the young baby in the head, is going to go free on this charge of murder, quote unquote, accidental murder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're not going to go forward with the trial. So he's completely um, exonerated, that'd be a good word, on his conduct. Now the city is arguing and screaming about it. I'm not. I'm not too upset about it. Uh, like I've said to you, Bev, if we don't move into a new arena of freedom, we're going to forever witness this types of this type of activity coming from the power structure. And I'm not calling it white power structure. I'm calling it the power structure, because there were black police officers on hand that night. And believe it or not, the the so-called star of the 48 hours was a black sh- uh, sheriff. 
He was a sheriff of the sheriff department who was conducting the Hollywood performance. So we got a major problem, and it's it's, it's above and beyond the color line. Okay. Okay. Now, tonight we're going to deal with nationality. And nationality is playing a tremendous role in everything that's happening across the country today. You know me, Beverly, I love mm-hmm. to uh, connect the, the right. dotted lines as to what's going down the pipe. Uh, birthright and nationality is our biggest downfall. If we could only get our quote unquote civil rights all stars, Negro pundits, uh, a bootleg, a, a boot, bootleg, a bootleg organization, and the AKA Alpha Delta female of uh, fraternity orders, if we could get them to focus on a new, a higher plane, we may be able to cut through a lot of this devilment that's going on across the country today, such as murder and all of the false arrests across the country due to traffic violations. All of those things are earmarked to the slaves. And I want to make sure you hear me when I say that. Slaves. We have house Negroes and we have field Negroes. Both of them are slaves. The the privileges and benefits for the house Negro would go in the area of the boule, the uh, uh, AKA the Negro pundits, all of those jive time niggas that you see on TV that are saying certain things that keep the CEOs happy, those are our worst enemies. And as long as we keep putting up with their trash and, gar- and garbage, we'll always be in this position. Now, this type of mentality started way back in the turn of the century, turn of the 19th century. When the Internet, uh, the uh, uh, National Association of Colored People, in so-called NAACP, was founded by two Europeans, Jews, the Spingard brothers, and ever since that uh, 1904, five, six, and seven, when they were formulating that particular organization, and we got these Negroes. I'm, I don't want to keep using that ugly word, nigger. But these Negroes we have today, such as this Jack Lake preacher in Detroit, uh, uh, a swindling window, Anthony, who has one of those mega churches, and he's a political pundit. He's a Negro pundit, and at the same time, he preaches every Sunday from the pulpit, and he's the president of NAACP. Them type of niggas has got to go. (laughs) And I'm saying it with force because as long as they keep running their mouth, Pleasing the power structure, that's the that's the blanket that protects them, the Europeans, from us, the field Negroes. And they are sitting in those positions. They got nerve to get in the streets. They got nerve to act like they're trying to uh, save uh, black uh, humanity and all. And the name of the game is to keep them in a Negro mentality. And as long as we're in that, I guarantee you we will never, never, ever move forward. And those now, those are the people that they keep in the media too. Yes, it is. And they, they have a microphone. They love to put them in the mic. And and they're on these black radio stations. You know, you have to look at these stations and ask yourself a question. For example, let's look at Jet Magazine. My wife, I can't stop her from subscribing to that Jet magazine. But now that they have cut the print down where she has to get a a magnifying glass to read the damn thing, Mm -hmm. she's beginning to say she's going to stop it. And I look at it with a smile on my face. I told you to stop it before. But now what does Jet magazine have to do with nationality and birthright? It's one of the keys to maintaining it nationality and birthright, away from us. Why? You've never seen a magazine so full of subscriptions owned and controlled by white CEOs. 
You never think about that. The Ebony Magazine is another one. There was another black magazine. I'm looking at it and can't call the name right now. But and it then, had all the, these these humongous Fortune 500 companies mm-hmm. that are advertising in those magazines. How is that possible? They've already said that you don't need to advertise with black folks because black folks going to buy Tide. I don't give a damn what's on sale. They're going to buy a, a Remy Martin. I don't care if you give away VO. They always go for the big names of everything. So some of those smart Europeans will say, why waste your money advertising in black communities when they're going to buy white anyway? But here are two magazines, highly successful. And then they had the nerve to say they had to cut down on the print because sales were down. How can that be, Beverly? Jet Magazine has been in ever since the black newspapers went out. The Europeans saw how profitable it was for them to keep those black papers printed, printing as long as it served their purpose. All of our so-called Negro leaders make their decision based decisions based on what the CEO would do if he was in their place. And, and and we have a problem with that. Now, it's no coincidence that out of all the people on earth, I think the number at one time was 3 billion or whatever. I don't know mm-hmm. how to go there. But out of the number of people on earth, every group has a nationality which is connected to a country. I want you blackies that listen today to get this clear. Every one of them have land attached to their nationality. If you're Spanish, you're Spain. If you're French, you're France. If you're Soviet Union, you're Russian. If you're Chinese, you're China. There's no such thing as Negro to blackie. There's no such thing as Afro-American. Can't you see that? Why do we keep letting them call us all of these names? I might as well call you a nigger. Why do you get mad when they use the word nigger? It's a label. It's something that they use to identify you with. And at one time, you recognized it. It only took certain uh, uh, dilemmas, such as the civil rights movement and and, uh, different race riots, quote, unquote, resurrections around the country to make them stop calling you openly a nigger. But you sit back now and let them call you Negro, colored, black, Afro-American, all of those names that they create. Can't you see that you're nothing more than a piece of trash? And then you scream when this Peckerwood shoots a seven-year-old girl in the face because they're making a movie and they lie and say that Granny, who was, and they use, let me back up, they use SWAT tactics to break into the house. They stood outside for three hours setting up the cameras. And then they turned around. They threw a hand grenade through the window, rammed the front door, and shot and shot the shotgun all in the same second. It was all. And, uh, and it wasn't no. It wasn't no DNA of the grandmother of Prince on the gun, and it wasn't no DNA of the Prince of the police officer either on the gun. So how did she yes. uh, handle the gun? Well, if you recall, they attempted to fix the autopsy to make it look like Granny had shot the shotgun. Mm-hmm. And they didn't know that um, Figer, the, the, the <laughs> so, I don't even know what you want to call him, but the prominent so-called European lawyer who picks only picks cases that he can win and not rock, hear me clear, not rock the European structure. He only picks those cases, and he only takes cases where the people that's going to receive the benefits, let me use the word ignorant, in a very pleasant way, knowing that 
If a million is given to this family, it'll be gone in a month, two months, six yeah. months. And they know that, that Kmart's and, and Walmart and Sam's Club going to get all of that money right back. And Ford and GM. And so oh, I forgot about them. They got to get them Cadillacs. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, and then we, you know, a guy called me today. He was so upset that people wouldn't understand why he was mad because they let that police officer go. And I asked him the same thing. Why are you upset? You come to class, I tell you that you're not human. You're not treated. You're not a part of the United States citizenship. Now, either if you want to be a 14th Amendment citizen, that's what the NAACP is trying to push you in. They don't ever use 14th Amendment until they have to go to court and they bring up civil rights. But they try to push you and say you are a citizen of the United States. And then when you question them, how is that possible? Because there are several Supreme Court rulings that say clearly, not only are you not, you will never become a citizen of the United States. Why is that so hard to believe? I, I told you, Bev, to look up the 13th Amendment. So what they do when they print the 13th Amendment, they pick two of the 20 sections that are most uh, valuable to them and leave out 18 sections that gives you the complete story of the 13th Amendment. So they pick out, number one, slavery, no more slavery in America. Everybody say, yeah, we ain't no slaves no more. Then they pick out the num what they call number two and said there will be no involuntary servitude. Okay? If you knew what involuntary servitude was, you would be screaming from the top of your lungs Every time you're stopped by the police, every time you get a ticket by the police, every time you get called downtown for garnishment, they are putting a tax, a unwanted tax on you. But then you'll get those Negro pundits come out and say, well, if you didn't want it, why did you buy it? Why did you tell them you wanted to purchase it? Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. Since we're talking about nationalities, you don't have any idea who you are. So let's talk about that. So they say, why do you buy it? Why would you buy a refrigerator and then turn around, not make payments, and then get mad when they come and take it? There's only one answer to that. You paid for it when you signed for it. How's that possible, Ron? There's no money. United States filed bankruptcy in 1933. They declared themselves broke. The country can only live and operate on debt. They sell you debt. You look at the greenback dollar bill as being a positive note in your pocket. But what you don't realize, because you don't read, that a note is a debt. You got a car note, a debt. You have a house note, a debt. You have an insurance note, which is in the policy, in the premium, a debt. So why would you think a Federal Reserve note is not a debt? It was only set up to keep track of the debt, the national debt across the country. But when people were so dumb and stupid, thinking it was real money, they said, well, the hell with them. We'll just keep turning out this greenback dollar bill, and we'll charge them 94 cents on the dollar. Did you hear me, Beth? They're charging us 94 cents on the dollar to, to, to use that note. What, yes, because it only costs 6 cents to make the note. But you use it as a dollar bill, so there's 96 cents that, that don't exist. Now, it, they don't care if the note is denomination is $1, $5, $10, $20, $100. It don't matter. Each one of those dollars, singles, and I don't mean singles like one. I mean singles like 5, 10, 20, 50, whatever it is. It only costs $0.96 cent to make it. 
So now here we go. To <laughs> if they, oh, it's, it's, it's a game. If if you spend five dollars, you gave the government four dollars and ninety six ninety four cent. Same thing with ten dollars. You gave them nine dollars and and ninety four cent. You get it? Right. So now they say these these Negro pundits they put that in there because they they pump it in you in school to tell you that oh you got to pay your debts. Then they told Jesus and the Bible <laughs> that you're not going to heaven if you don't pay your debts because Jesus okay. paid his all that trash. That they put. Well, well, how come that the okay the United States you hear them saying we are trillion dollars in debt and if we are paying ninety six cents. For every dollar that we use, how are they still in debt? Because they're not. All you have to do, the next person that says to you, we are X number of dollars in debt, just be calm, don't get excited, and just ask the question, who do we owe? <laughs> That's the only well, they, 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 want, they, want you, they, they want you to think that we owe the banksters in England. Isn't that who the debt right. is to? All right, let's 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 explore that. I love you. I love you for running that. Here's the deal. They tell you that the banksters in England and international, you owe them. Okay? So you have to you should ask why. I never borrowed from them. What are you talking about? So they're gonna try and hook up that refrigerator to to the fact that you didn't pay it off, so now you owe and you gotta pay them. So here's the answer to all of that. It's a very simple answer. That is this. Anytime you create the the debt or the monies or the currency, let's use that word, currency, to purchase an item, you cannot get the item unless you sign your signature. So if you sign your signature, it makes you the creditor, not the debtor. Because you created it by, by signing your name. The debtor didn't sign a damn thing. Why would you owe, uh, uh, I don't, can't think of something fast enough, somebody applied, Fred's appliance for the refrigerator when you paid for it when you signed your name? Because he's going to take that promissory note and cash it, Beverly. He's going to take the promissory note, stamp it the way I've been teaching in my classes, put it in his account, and his account will raise whatever the amount of the of the refrigerator was. So let's say five hundred dollars. When you close, and they're gonna put it on the truck to bring to your house, they say sign here. Once you sign, they take it to the bank within twenty four hours, deposit it. Their in their uh, account rises five hundred dollars. Right. Then they turn around and tell you, you gotta make payments. So they're going to get double pay. And then if you refuse to make payments, they're going to come and get the refrigerator. They don't normally do that with refrigerator. But they could come and get the refrigerator or garnish your check. Now you tell me what's going on. The only way they get away with it is because you're ignorant to what they're doing. And you never was taught enough finance as to how to stop them from doing what they do. Now, if you want to do it on a on a a low key level, remember this: anytime you sign your name, always reserve your rights. And if you do that, you're going to find that they're going to come after you and say, uh, "Beverly D, you uh, you bought this refrigerator. What is this stuff here you put behind it? I'm reserving my rights." Oh, well, you don't have to do that, uh, Bev. You know, we, why would you do that? You know, we, we can't do our process without that. You're right. You can't catch it if Beverly reserved her rights. And that makes them angry because the lower, the lower echelon, hear me clear, they have no idea what I'm talking about. It's the CFO way at the top. It's, so it's going to take, if you sign it and reserve your rights, it's going to take at least, let's say six weeks, three to six weeks for that check goes through all the process and then it gets to that CFO and it kicks out. They say, oh, where did this come from? So they get on the phone, they call back down, they say, Ron, did you sell this to Beverly D? Yes. You got to get her back in there and get this garbage off because we can't have this on this this uh, uh, promissory note. So here he comes calling you with some kind of lie and if you don't know 
know what he's talking about. You're going to say, oh, yeah, I'll be in tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. So you go back in make and, and sign it. You say, okay, hold it right there. Don't put that on there. You don't put it on there, everybody's happy. Now, now. Him, go ahead. Go ahead. If you say to him, number one, I'm not coming in, and number two, kiss it where the sun don't shine, and number three, don't call me no more and hang up. That's what you should have told me. Now, okay. You, now, someone is saying here that when you – uh, sign the promissory note, you creating the money. And then also they saying that behind your name you you put without prejudice. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm okay. whoever that is, they're totally correct. Okay. And then if you do it with that concept, they cannot cheat you by making you pay two or three times for the item and then come and get the item if you don't make payments. He's right. Or whoever did that, they're totally correct. And that's what I'm saying. All you have to do is reserve your rights. And and you if you look up, I tell you what to do before you start, because I know a lot of y'all are kind of chicken when it comes to <laughs> attacking them Europeans. Y'all scared of them. I love them. Damn Pecker Woods, I love them. So what you do, you go and look up UCC 1-207. Or UCC 1-308. Just look it up and read it. And notice it says you have a right to reserve your signature anytime you, you use it. But they're going to tell you you can't do that. See, we've been getting away with it in Detroit. When we go get our license renewed, we always put on the license UCC 1-207. All of a sudden, when they caught it, they said, oh, stop, in that Detroit area. It's only coming out of Detroit. Get people on that counter. I want to make sure they don't put that on there. Why? Because if you put it on, they can't come after you for speeding, for any traffic violation, because you're only reserving your rights to get the permission to drive your vehicle or travel in your vehicle. That's all you signed for. But anytime you don't reserve your rights, whatever's on the books that you have no idea that's on the, what's on the books, you're responsible for. Because you signed up and say that I love whoever sold me this refrigerator. I don't care what they got on the books. I got the refrigerator. I'm trying to make payments. I'm happy as a sissy in the CC. <laughs> okay. So when we go sign the uh, forms for the the uh, to get our license, and so once you sign it, if you put behind your name without prejudice or to reserve my rights, uh, they're going to have a problem with it. Oh, big time. Now, you, because I know you, if you go out in Sterling mm-hmm. or Madison Heights, you can get away with it. But then when they see it, they got to figure out a way to get you to come back but not let you know why you're coming back. And I'm saying okay. it because you are an adult and you don't look like the like the, the rough house. Everywhere I go, they check it. Got a beard, talk back to them, stuff like that. Look them in the face. You know, Europeans hate to be looked at directly. And if they give you any problem, here's the first thing you should do. Bring your supervisor out here. That's what you do. Tell them to bring the supervisor. Get the supervisor's name. Ask the supervisor what law are they using to tell you you cannot reserve your rights. They got cases all the way to the Supreme Court that states clearly anytime you say it's your name. Why can't you reserve your rights? I tell you what, go in the kitchen and take your cornflakes, a can of beans, or whatever you got in your cabinet, your cupboard, take it out, spin it around, see what it says on there. Uh, a Procter and Gamble, uh, uh, reserve my rights without prejudice. All rights reserved. All of that stuff's on there. They do it, so why can't you do it? Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? But right. see, we don't read, we don't know that, we don't have a nationality to understand that. See, all these things are taught once you get your nationality. You need to know all of these things in addition to your birthright. 
all of that is a part of you as a more sovereign, whatever you, whoever you are. Okay. All of the other people know this, but now they don't have to practice it because the system is set up to give them privileges and benefits. So they don't even have to worry about uh, of, of reserving their rights. And they, a lot of them don't even know about it. So that ain't your problem. Don't worry about it. You want to be free. They are satisfied at being a 14th Amendment citizen. So if you're satisfied, stop trying to be sovereign. The, the now, now getting, getting back to the nationality, what about right. what is wrong with people using African Americans? Uh-huh. Because they they are claiming to to uh, countries okay. or continents. So. Yep. Have you ever heard a Frenchman call himself? Uh, I gotta say it right. European Fran- French, European French, Mm-mm. or European German? No. Why? Because you have to have a country, not a continent. When you say African American, you have confused the whole definition of nationality. Number one, Africa is a continent with over 50 nationalities. You understand? Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, if you are an American, okay, what kind of American? You said Afro or African, so you can't be that. So now you got to think what kind of American you are. And I'm going to ask, are you talking about North America, South America, or Central America? People that live in Central America, for example, they don't call themselves uh, Central American, Guatem- American Guatemalan or whatever down there, South America. They don't call themselves uh, 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 Argentine. South American, Argentine, American, Argentine. So why are you going to sit up here and call yourself? <laughs> that ain't even the same concept. Because they don't use a continent. You see what I'm saying? Right. The Europe is a continent. There's seven continents. I can't name them all, but you, can, you know what I'm talking about. India, Europe, Africa, North America, continent. All three of these are a continent hooked up. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You cannot be. There's no such thing. United Nations is set up for the uh, unity of nations, not idiots that don't know who they are. There's no seat in the United Nations for uh, Afro-Americans. It don't exist. So, so you're, you're saying United Nations, you better figure out who you are before you start trying to go. Okay, so as you go into the United Nations to say that I'm going to them, I have to tell them that I am an indigenous, an OMAC or indigenous or, or something like that. Yes, you got to tell them who you are before you get in. But here's what, here's a hookup with you. Mm-hmm. You want to tell them that you are indigenous. Okay. See, there is a uh, category in the United Nations. That's why every four to six years they have what they call uh, Indigenous Declaration of Indigenous uh, Conventions. All of these people that are in, I don't know how many nations it is, but all of those nations that are there, they know that they are on borrowed land. There are indigenous people who live in Europe. There are indigenous people who live in Africa. There are indigenous people who live in Americas. They're all over. And they don't belong to the bullcrap governments that you think they belong to. And they are respected by the earth everywhere you find them. If you think back when Bush, Daddy Bush had that damn... uh, a desert storm, and they were fighting around uh, Kuwait. They had to stop for seven days because a tribe of, of uh, I want to call them nomads, but now they call them uh, Bedouins, Bedouins. 
those are indi- those are indigenous Arabs, so-called Arabs. They're in they're they're, they're Bedouins. They call them Bedouins. They they were coming. They were traveling on their annual re, uh, retreat, headed for the coast of of uh, Kuwait, where there's a huge uh, oasis. And they got their camels and their donkeys and whatever. And here they come, boom! United Nations told Iraq and United Nations back off, let them in, let them do their thing, and let them out, and then go back to fighting. That's what they did. When you look on the highway, Bev, and you see a sign that says deer crossing, have you ever thought about that? Deers, animals, are indigenous. The deers have been traveling that path for hundreds, thousands of years. They never change. That's what, that's what indigenous people do. They travel from one area to another area. That's it. So they have to put signs up to say deer crossing. They try to stop them. They put fence and stuff up, try to stop them. When they put that big pipeline across Alaska, they had a big argument about the pipeline. They had an area where those elk traveled. They made them raise that pipeline up so them elk could get through. Mm-hmm. That's indigenous. That's indigenousness. People are the same way. We have traveled. That's why when you look at our history, our story, we traveled all over. We didn't stay in one area and live and this, that, and other. Coming out of the uh, uh, so-called, uh, let's call it reconstruction. I ain't going to call it slavery. Reconstruction. We traveled from place to place. Even if you read Dred Scott, he was traveling out of Mississippi area up into St. Louis, Illinois area. Everybody did it. European didn't know nothing about this. Okay? We have always had a culture. European has made fun of our culture, so now we don't know who we are, so we try to mimic what they either put on TV, put in magazines, or something that we see, we want to be like them. That's unbelievable. But it works. I, I'm not saying unbelievable that it don't work. So they have taken us far away from our nationality. And let me just read to you what they said about our nationality. On September 5th, 1774, the Moors were a divided and defeated nation here in North America. On that date, the 13 European colonies or nations met in Philadelphia in a building known as Carpenter's Hall. It was a Masonic convention. Masonic is defined as pertaining to or characteristic of Freemasons or Freemasonry, secret order with secret passwords, handshakes, and secret ceremonies, with, with meetings only known to the members and secret sig- signals. The meeting or convention was originally called Odd Fellas Convention, O-D-D, Odd Fellas Convention. The popularity name of this convention, according to the European history books, became known as the First Continental And George Washington was elected chairman of the convention. In Masonic terms, he became the Grand Master. Two of the main issues in this meeting, which was discussed and debated, were, number one, how were the 13 colonies going to form a united front against King George of England, which was up in New York? Number two, here's where I'm going with this. How were the 13 colonies going to justify the institution of perpetual slavery of the Moorish inhabitants and population where where were renamed by the European nations with such names as Indian, they made that up, I told you that before, Negroes, Blacks, Colored, and etc. 
Now issue number one was to form a united front against King George of England. The 13 colonies voted to draw up a treaty between themselves because the 13 colonies were actually 13 separate nations or countries at the point uh, 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 at, the, at that point in time. This treaty or document became known as Articles of Confederation in your history books. See, they, these people are full of, whoo, a little bit more. And this had solved issue number one. Here we go with issue number two. We're talking about nationality, Beverly. Mm -hmm. Issue number two, which the delegates debated at the convention, was to justify potent, uh, pot, <laughs> per, per, <laughs> mm -hmm. they wanted to <laughs> enslave the Moorish population. The 13 colonies agreed to strip the Moors of their nationality and their birthrights which was an act of European psychology. I think we talked about that. Europe. Right. <laughs> the European colonies gave the Moorish population the slave names or the slave marks of Negro, Black, colored, Ethiopian, Indian, and that type of thing. And the European colonists defined those slave marks as something inferior to the name white. The European colonies defined white as a color of purity and define black as representing everything evil. White and black was also used in the legal status, and I'll explain that in a minute. White meant that you were a citizen, and black meant you were not a citizen. When the Moorish population accepted the inferior slave marks of nationality, of Negro, black, colored, etc., the Moorish inhabitants cut themselves off from the in their elusive history of their forefathers, whom were the founders of the first civilization of the earth. The Moors' forefathers did not form the slave marks of Negroes, colored, and black. The inferior names or identities marked the Moors as inferior class of being whom had been uh, subjected to slavery. The marks or slave names would forever disqualify and rob Moors from their free person citizenship in the true sense of meaning in which the term free person is used in the Articles of Association and the Articles of Confederation and the Declaration of Independence. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787 and the present day Constitution of the United States. So when they talked about free person, they were talking about black people. The strategy of this plan or conspiracy of the Europeans, which they used, is as follows. If the Moors were ever emancipated or set free in the future, the Moors would remain subjected or dominant by the European race whom had solely authorized, uh, had solely, who had the sole authority in the classifying system uh, via race and race was incorrectly being distinguished as colors such as black race and white race. Mm -hmm. So they set this up way back and they took a blood oath that they would continue this or they would kill anyone that portrayed the secret. And this information only came out in the late 1940, uh, late 40s, 46 and 47 that they begin to, this information started coming out. So you see that they took all of our inheritance or our, our heritage and took it away from us. And we are suffering from, and all it is is a state of mind. The nationality is a state of mind. A lot of people are asking me, how do I get my papers to become free? You don't need papers to become free. You need a, a free mind as to who you are. And if you don't work on the mind, no paper is going to help you because nobody really cares. See, when you were born, nobody asked you or fill out papers that you wanted to be uh, black, colored, or whatever. The European put that on you when you were born. They had a little box set up. 
and they checked it that you was a Negro or your mama was a Negro or your daddy was a European. All of that was checked coming from 1774. We need to look at this thing as serious as it is and stop letting those Negro pundits get on the news and that yang yang or them jack leg ass preachers get out there and try to be politicians telling you what's best for you. That's the mentality of 1920s when the when Booker T. Washington came up with that talented tenth, who said that the talented tenth could tell the Europeans what the masses of black people wanted. And they're still using that concept today. That's why you have those Negro pundits and those civil rights all-stars. Anyone out there that's ever flew in an airplane? I know you have, Biff. Yeah. How much How much time do you think it took you to get reservations to fly wherever you went? How long do you think it took? It didn't take that yeah, long. Go ahead. I'm gonna, I, I did it over that. over the you know over the internet. All right. Did you did you do it to fly in two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, or three months, or fly the next day? No, it wasn't the next it? day. It was more like a, a week or two. All right. All right. That's good enough. So I'll ask you, how is it that Al Sharpton could be on TV in New York today. <laughs> <laughs> and a riot break out tonight in Tupelo, Mississippi, and that nigga be there in the morning. Because he, he got his lot. own private plane. They, they come get him. he ain't on somebody's payroll. Right. They come get him. Say so what? They have to come get yeah, him. You're right. Yes, but have you ever listened to a show and listened to them people that call in? Reverend Al, I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> I said to myself, <laughs> do you realize what you're saying? Reverend Al, you're the only one to tell it like it is. Hot to I didn't know. Look at all the work we got to do. But they don't, yeah, because they don't know. We haven't been taught, you know, so. That's true. Okay, I agree with you. But my point is in bringing that up, Look at the work we got to do to get to those people to wake them up. And that's what you're doing. You're waking them up. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. But my, you know what my position is? You can take it or leave it. I'm not going to argue with you about what I do and don't do. You know what I mean? We got a couple of callers. Do you want to take them now? They've been holding oh, on. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Ellie After told this, we'll take a break. Okay. Area code 804-836. 804, are you there? Yeah. Did you want to uh, peace? Yes, hello. Yeah, how you doing? Big up to you, WD, <laughs> and all your efforts in your show, everything you're doing. Big Elder Ramesh L. Bay, big up to you as well. Had a quick question on the Accept for Value. As far as um, when you sign in, the documents, if you don't sign it with the all rights reserved without prejudice, uh, if you do not sign it like that, can you still accept for value? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. See, 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 when you want something for yourself, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you get it. But when you want something that someone else is going to use, now notice you're accepting for value to pay off whatever it is. So that's right. enough right there to make them angry because you're going to accept it for value because you have knowledge of HJR 192. Right. You dig it? But when you're buying a refrigerator or a car or something like that, that's a whole different ball game, brother. Right, right. You dig it? Yes, sir. Yeah. And it, it so comes down to the commissary note. When you create the promissory note, they can cash it and then make you make payments. That's the trick right there. They cash your promissory note, and then you, i tell you what you do. The next time you write a check from your checking account, right on the bottom when you sign your name, put that right at the bottom, put down there, all rights reserved, and watch them send that check back to you and say, you, we can't use this check. 
because right, that way they can't they can't offset like they want to as far as the internal um audience. That's right. That's right. And I'll tell you something else. It sounds like you don't know this. Get a get a microscope, a magnifying glass, not a and microscope, a fine print, magnifying the, the, glass. The, the, the fine print on the sentence? Yes, line. yes, yes, yes. Right. It's a sentence. You give them the right to go in your account. Right. Why would they do that? Right. So if you're going to put you up clear? under that line, go ahead. No, no, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying, if you're going to put under that line, all rights reserved, that cancels out that line that they're going in your account. Right. You dig it? Yes, sir. All right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm Anything else? Coming. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm about to, like, I'm, I'm literally about to um, buy a car tomorrow. So, um, you know, I ain't want to freak them out with the all rights reserved. Right? I'm not in a position to get the car. But I am going to, I'm going to make the first payment. <laughs> I'm going to make the first payment. Are you payment, buying it? Are you, are you buying it or leasing it? No, I'm buying it. No. Or are you getting okay. it on credit? Yeah, are you yeah, getting it on my, credit? Are you paying cash? Yeah, they're, using, they, they're using my credit. They're using my All credit. Right. I'll, I'll be using All my right. credit to get the car. All right. You know, well, I, it sounds yeah, like you need the car. Yeah. So, so yeah, it I sounds do. like you need the car. So if you go in there being a smart aleck, they're going to say, no, we ain't going to give it to you. But right. what you should do is go in and sign it and then get the car and then when they oh you email me. I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, no, I'm gonna send the first note. I'm gonna send the first payment to him. After that, so it, it, it's gonna go down after that. So. All right. Yes, all right so I appreciate all the right. time, man. So, again, salute to you, the lovely Beverly D and Big Elder Romach L Bay, salute to you as well, man. I love your efforts, your work. It's beautiful, man. We just gotta wake up. Yes, we work yes. on it, and I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate you. Yeah. Yes, we, and we salute you for, for listening and, and taking action, and thank you. Oh, yeah, I, I listen to every show. Y'all hold it down. Be the beautiful God and God as you are. Salute. All right. Thank you. Appreciate Peace. it. Yep. Peace. Let's Love. take one more, and then we'll take a break, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, we're going to see uh, Dead Shepherd. Are you there, Dead Shepherd? Dead Shepherd. Okay. We'll have to come back to you. Let's take this one more. Uh, Wait a minute. Okay, they just went off. We'll get them on the other side when we come back. All right. Okay, good enough. All right. Let's take a 10-minute break. I'll be back. And Rob, when you get ready to come back, when you sit down, I, uh, I can see you, so I know you're ready. Okay. That'll work. Thank you. All right, Bev. Yep. We'll be back in 10 minutes. And Bev, are you there? Yes, we can hear you now. Right. Yep. Okay. My we fault. have we have a, a couple of calls here before we uh, you get started. Okay. Go. I'm okay. ready. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Debt Shepherd. Are you there, Debt Shepherd? Yeah, this is Greg calling from Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, all right. Yes, Greg. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing uh, what you what you talked about earlier about how we sign and who we are. And I just want to share a personal story. This happened within the last couple of weeks. I happen to be in the finance business. I work in the banking industry, and I've been doing that for about. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I tuned into your show. I've never heard it. And I'm like, wow, this guy's talking about this very specific thing. And I'll just share a quick story. I wanted to borrow a very tiny sum of money. I had the cash in the bank. I simply didn't want to spend it. So I said, I'll just borrow it from the bank, you know, a six-month note, whatever. So they drew up the papers. This is less than $10,000. It's just chicken feed to the bank. And what I did was I printed my name on the signature line, and next to it I wrote, without prejudice. Now, what happened was wow. about six days later, uh, our operations manager, who is a, a very nice person, he's not an evil person. He just simply said, hey, look, I got a call from corporate, and they don't like the way you submitted your paperwork. And I said, well, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Are they unhappy with the fact that I printed my name or the fact that I wrote without prejudice? And he said, they don't have to you printed your name. So I said, I said, okay. Um, if I sign my name in cursive, C U R S E, cursive, but keep without prejudice on there, will it be okay? And he said, I think it'll be okay. 
Well, I had some other stuff going on with going on with family and whatnot, and it, I wasn't in a hurry to borrow this money or actually create the money with the bank. So I waited, and then a couple of days later, he came back, very nice, and he said uh, they emailed me and they said they don't like the way you submitted your paperwork. They want you to just sign your name with no printing and no without prejudice. And I said, you know, I don't really wow. need that, that bad. I don't want to create a stink. I'm not here to create. I wasn't there to create any division. This is where I make my living. This is how I feed my family. So no hard feelings. Yep. He, said, he said, cool, no big deal. Well, my boss came back. My division, you know, department head said, and he grinned, and he knows, he knows how I am. He said, man, you've created a kind of a stink here. Um, they're, they're up in arms. They don't know. Like, think the, the president of the bank had to call the attorney, and, they had, and you said it in your show earlier. They needed to call people to know what this means. And there was one particular yes. – what it meant, and he was okay with it. A particular person reading the note was not happy with it. So this is what I came to understand. When you don't yes. know who you are, yes. Yes. Beautifully, when you don't know who you are, and then maybe you suddenly become aware of who you are, let these people in the system know that – they don't like it. It scares them, and it doesn't mean that they're evil or that they're at the top of the food chain, so to speak. They're just not used to yep. dealing with this, and they reject it outright. Yes, so, yes. Was like, oh, that's hey. beautiful. Yeah, I said no harm, no foul. It's okay. So my wife and I did was we went and we created the money at her bank because she's a banker too, and we had the money <clears> within twenty-four hours. The note creates the money. We we sign the note, yes. and the, the bank knows that once you sign the note, then they deposit the note, and that's what the money really is. The bank didn't give us something they had and we didn't have. Now, you may say, Greg, you're a banker. Why would you do this? It's because I wanted the convenience of not spending my cash and simply creating the money and then just making that go away in six months. So when you talked about that yes. – I was just like, wow. And here's the thing. Ninety-nine percent of the population doesn't know about that. Right. It doesn't mean we're smarter right. than they are, right. but all it means is is these people that are in control, they're not in power. They're just in control. They know this. Yes. And somebody Yes. Yes. They go, Whoa, no, 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 no. We we're gonna shut you down. <laughs> They do. <laughs> and they're and they're afraid of their jobs and position. That's beautiful, Greg. Yeah. That happened to my son. He bought a he bought an automobile and signed it. It took him about four to six weeks for them to call him and tell him to bring the car back because mm -hmm. there was a problem. And I told yeah. him not to do it because he already had the car. And he yeah. and they kept hounding him and hounding him and he finally took it back. They gave him a different car as if they were doing him a favor, but they made it clear, do not put reserve your rights on the new contract, and he didn't yeah. do it. And the the thing yeah. is, is, I'm not an expert on this by any stretch, but my understanding about without prejudice, it's, it's just a different expression of what you said, which is really the same thing, is, is if I sign my name, whether I print it or put it in cursive, it doesn't really matter. What I'm saying to no. these people that create money out of nothing is look, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this with you. I'm gonna create the money, and you're telling them I understand how the game really works. And what I'm telling you, when I write without prejudice or whatever you write on there, is that if it's not in this document, I am not on board. I have not signed up for the ride, including that's right, that's or anything else that are connected to you as a corporation. Yes, yes, yes. That's what it's about. And yeah. see, when when you when you go into a corporation like a bank, they have certain rules in the bank system that you, as a customer or a client, have no inclination what it is. Yeah. So when when you sign without prejudice, it stops them from doing whatever's on their books that they've been doing for years. The That's banks right. cannot lend credit. They cannot lend credit. There's no money in the banks. They can only take uh, the interest of, of – I'm not sure how they get their money. But it, when you when you go in, and as you did, Greg, you were borrowing your own money. That's what that yeah. amounted to. 
You, you created the credit, and the only reason you got that money was because your credit report stated that you were qualified to pay back that amount. Interesting. It's been working. But people are waking up, and and like you say, they get nervous when they challenge it, and and all you're doing is, like you said, you got to live, and you gotta. that's your job and your income. You're not there to make a fight, but yeah. you learn some certain things, and yeah. – Right on, brother. That's all I can tell you. Right on. <laughs> and the thing, the thing I'll now tell people know. is this: is, is you know, you you may hear some things such as what we just spoke of, and and it's easy to go, man. All these people are evil. I have news for you. I've been in the lending business for 14 years. Ninety nine point nine percent of the people in the business have no are clue what we're talking about. They're not evil people. That's right. Your banker, your loan officer. They're, they love their families, they're paying their bills, and they're not there to cheat you. And I'll go back to another thing that you talked about, and I think this is a, even the more powerful uh, part of what you're teaching today is is on the third page of a loan application, if we're talking about a mortgage, which happens to be my specialty, okay, there's a part okay. at the bottom of the government monitoring section. And it asks you what your ethnicity is, not Hispanic or Latino, African American, Native, you know, there's there's some options there, but then there's an option that says, I do not wish to provide this information. Now, you can do that, but here's the rub. The government tells the loan officer or the banker, if you physically meet this person, it doesn't matter if they check I do not wish. You must make a decision based you, on your you check it, what it is. Wow. And, um, that's scary stuff, and I've been doing this for four. I had one recently, and I'll give you I'll give you a real life example. This particular gentleman who came to us, he got a loan, he closed. It was his first house. He was excited. He happened to be from Ethiopia, and he happened to be a man of color. And he was a truck driver. He was a good yes. guy. Met him probably three times. Now on his application, he put in there for his own personal reason, which is none of my business. I do not wish to disclose my whatever. Fine, but the law yes. and my job says you must tell me, <laughs> dear banker, if you physically meet this man, what you thought he was. And I had to put on there that he was black or African American. Now, I understand that that's all a bunch of BS, but I was compelled by law, yep. which means they can fire me, so I did yes. it. He'll never know that. Yes. It's, yes. Okay, it's just a collection of information. And I love what you said. I love what you said about you know, and, and I'm going to paraphrase this in, in, in a really quick sentence. It, this is what I'm getting from what you're teaching, and I love what you're teaching. The vibe is so amazing. Here's what I here's what I feel. If I don't know who I really am, there are many in control, not power, just control. There's a difference. Who will be more than glad to define for me who I am? Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> They yes, will be Greg. More yes, than, yes, they will yes. More than glad to sell me any facade of who I might mistakenly think I am, or who I mistakenly yes. think I should be. And guess what? They'll yes. take monthly payments for as many years as you want to give them to them. Yes, yes. And everybody will go home happy every night. Greg, I appreciate you. That was an excellent call. Excellent call. (laughs) Come back. Be sure and come back next week. Absolutely. Don't leave us tonight. We've got a couple more minutes. Thank you. All right? Okay. Thank you. Wow. We have uh, another caller, uh, area code 212-980. Hello? Yes, we here. Yes. How are you? How are you? How are you, Beverly? How are you on March? I listen every I'm week. I love the show. Calling from Harlem, New York, okay. and I had um a question that's a little bit off topic. Um, two questions for you, Vaughn, and one for Beverly, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, All right. Um, Vaughn, it's off topic, like I said, but I was a little confused, and you you've gone over it several times, but I just don't get the connection. I was hoping you could simplify it for me. Um, it said you always say Britain was in New York before England, and I'm trying to figure out how is that. Seventeen seventy six was the founding of the United States. If you go to Britain or any foreign country and ask them when were they founded, they were all founded after seventeen seventy six. And the reason mm. they were founded after that because this 
was the old world, and Europe over there was the new world. They flipped the script to confuse everybody and, and write this madness of uh, their history in order to get them into the books and do what they do and say what they say. England was in the New York area in the beginning. Mm-hmm. France and, and, and Spain was in Florida and the North and the Carolinas. France was up near Carolinas and down in Pennsylvania area and down and around and back up. And then uh, Spain was all the way at the bottom across Louisiana and all the way up. So, and then if you get one of those old maps, you're going to see countries all over the United States that are now in other areas. The oh, War so of you, 1812, you... go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was the just War of to... 1812 ran all the flags, unidentified flags or undesirable flags. They ran mm-hmm. them off the continent of this this continent, and they went over and, and established what they want to establish over there, okay? Now, the time element is going to be confusing because they using different calendars in order to, and I don't want to get into that because I'm not that uh, 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 tight on that, mm-hmm. uh, but the, these calendars they have, they, they, they are adding time to them and taking time away. We're on a certain calendar in in the United States and so-called America around the world that deals with us has to use our calendars, but some other places use different calendars and and for different things. There was a 521-year history placed into the Moorish history by the Europeans in order for them to create a history for them. Got you, got you. (laughs) <laughs> Smoke, I got you. <laughs> uh, my next question for you, Ron, was uh, <laughs> this weekend. Uh, my mother, uh, my mother lives in New Jersey, and she was coming over to visit me in New York. And um, she parked her car in a parking lot. She didn't read the sign, and they told it. And um, when she got back, she couldn't find her car. She thought it was stolen, and she called around and found out that this um, tow truck company had it. And um, they told her they were going to charge her two fifty a day. And they don't open up again until Monday, which was this Monday, and um, that was on a Friday. So she ended up paying like $750 to get her car back. And I told her, you know, I don't think that was legal. So I just wanted to know, is that legal or not? All right. First of all, no, it's not legal what they did. But number two, you need to get the specifics. Where did she park and what did the sign say? Yeah, the sign said no parking, um, and, and she, the last time she went to my house, came over to visit me, um, that business wasn't there. That was a, a lot that was owned by another company, and they had no signs up. So she just assumed that it was the same, but that, that business was sold to another company, and, it, and their sign said yes. something to the effect of, park here, Joan Visk, you will be told. Yes, okay. Number Number three. The precinct that's in the area, did your wife, uh, mother go and, and report a stolen vehicle? No, she didn't report anything stolen. I think um, what she did was, um, you know, first she um, she she called to see if her car, um, you know, was in a tow shop. And I guess when she read the sign, she called the tow, the tow company instead of the police. Okay. Well... She needs to go to the police department and see if there was a report for that day and time to move that automobile. They don't have a right to move an automobile because they put a sign up. Who the hell they think they are? They have to have a court order to take private property. Mm, you dig it? Okay. So I got you. If they have a contract with, and I'm trying to think, if the people that own the lot has a contract with the tow truck, truck company, that has nothing to do with your mama. Your I mama wasn't that. in on that contract. And, and the messed up thing is that that's kind of what I was explaining to her, but I have an uncle who's a, a cop in Jersey, and, you know, he pretty much reprimanded her and told her that, you know, she had to pay and all this. And I was like, you know, I'll listen to him, but, you know, she, she you know, whatever the, the law says, she's going with. And I told her this just didn't sound right because you had no contract with the um, 
for anyone over there to right. take anything right. from you, you know? You know it, the building used yeah. to be owned by the Board of Education, so I guess anyone could park there then, but then um, a private company bought the school, and um, yeah. now they're making What's it the into a factory or whatever. Company? It doesn't matter. A private company has nothing to do with you or your mama or any citizen. And when they set up contracts to total stuff away, that's their problem. That's not your problem. So you have a stolen vehicle. That's a carjacking you had. And you mm. should go to the tow truck company. You ain't got to tell your mama. Go to the tow truck company and just tell them very friendly. Uh, I went to the precinct, and they didn't have any report that you were going to take that automobile. It was it was it was not your property, and you took it. Now when they look it up, now don't argue with that first person you talk to, because they just mm-hmm. don't talk it out. You're gonna have to ask: Is the owner around of the tow truck company? I like to speak with him. Maybe I should come back. I want to make an appointment to see the owner, and you need to tell that owner that he has a major problem here. Uh, my mom came out, and boy, it would have been wonderful had you taken her to the hospital because she had a nervous breakdown that her car was yes, she almost did. Or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She had to pay the seven fifty. That was just last weekend. It almost did it last weekend. Well, maybe mm-hmm. wherever she is, tell her go see a doctor and tell her she's still shook up behind. Her. Oh, okay. So she has a suit. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> You're a genius, brother. You're a genius, yes, man. Right. This information is for educational purposes only. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could get her to listen, but, you know, she thinks everything I, I listen to is just that revolutionary listen stuff. To listen to me. I am not mm-hmm. an attorney. I have no knowledge of law. I'm just talking on educational purposes only. I so got you. you need to sit down and, and deal with it. And you may be able to deal with it and go around, Mama, because they had no business doing what they did. They, anytime they, they pull an automobile, there must be a number given to them by the police department of that precinct. They have to go to the precinct and say, I'm going to pull this car at this address between 1 and 4 o'clock. And they will give them an okay to do it and send a, a paddy wagon in the area just in case there's some gunfighting or somebody gets shot for stealing the car. I and got they, you. Mm-hmm. Most of them don't do it because y'all don't know that, that to check on that. Absolutely. So they stole that automobile, and you can get them. Uh, you got to take my email address and 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 send. Oh me yeah, you there. send me you send me your email blast all the time. So um yeah, I'll, I'll send right. you something to let you know it's me. Yeah, bring me up. Yeah, um, bring me my up. My last today. question was for, I, was I for a, Bev. All right, go ahead, Bev. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to know, Bev, um, when's the next time you're going to have um, Mr. Robert X on? I wanted to hear what he had to say about ISIS, Ferguson, and Ebola. Um, get the articles uh-huh. so we could make well, it official. He'll be, I just... he, he'll be on uh, this Sunday and Monday. Oh, beautiful. My, all right. Well, that's yeah, all I need nine, to hear, at nine guys. O'clock, at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you very much, both of you. And um, uh, okay, I really commend you, you for the work you do. Thank you for listening. All right. Thanks for listening. Yep. Uh, Ryan, we have All some right. more callers. Get them. Uh, let's see. Let's do area code uh, 347-319. 347-319. Okay. I'm going to go to 301-403. 301, area code? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, 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 uh, yes. Uh, well, I was talking about what I was talking about is what Ron was talking about earlier about how the the country is divided into two. Well, well, Spain, Spain and France, they they divide because when Spain Spain came over and invaded us, and France they came over, they divided they they came divided one side and the other divided the other side. And then they also, with that, they got a contract with the Chinese right now, and people don't know about it. And um, and um, and um, thing is, and the thing is, uh, like verbs, verbs we use, verbs, object pronouns, all this stuff we use are words that we don't even know the meaning of. So. 
So it's like it's like it's a, it's like they reuse the definition of the word you think the meaning of it, and it's really not the word you think the meaning of it. Just like a pronoun could be pro 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 no now, okay, with void of known fact and truth as a hearsay condition, which what which y'all talking about to young brother, with with voiding of any contract with with a with a with our tr- tradition, you know, see. It's, it's like you know they they play a they they play words as magic. So yes, and, and this that's idea why they is, call spelling spell. That's why they call that right. spelling. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and so just like like I'm reading here now, like a now. Well, that's that's now. part of brother. That's part of slavery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they got. That's how they came over that's here. That's part of slavery. Yeah, that's how they came over here, you know what I mean, and 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 tricked our mind. They they can they forced it, like you say, they forced it in us. They forced it in us, you know what I mean, so yeah. bad that we as black people can't well, even see how. I don't know how what your timetable is, but when you speak of France, he's breaking up quite a bit, man. Okay, I hear you. I hear you, you say when you speak of France. You come, you and clear. We can hear you. I'm going to put yeah. you on hold, caller, and then you okay. can hear his uh, response. Right. Okay. okay. Go, go ahead, Ron. Yeah. I was just going to say, he didn't give a timetable on France and, and Spain coming here, but he's going back to probably 1,400, 1,200, way back when they did come over, but they came over with the blessing of not only the Queen of England, they came over with the blessing of the Pope, yeah. the document of discovery that they had a right to come over here in this hemisphere and steal, loot, rape, take anything they wanted, and anyone that did not believe in Christianity or was against Christianity, they gave them a right in the name of God, or their God anyway, to, to kill them. So... They didn't educate. Those were not the ones that educated us because most of them knew that the Moors were the the heavyweights of the earth. So a lot of them tried to stay away from the Moors when they came over. All of the things that we're suffering from is when they want, tried to colonize the United States or El Maroc and begin to put us in this system. Those are the things that I talk about. Maybe I could call it early history versus later history or something. I don't know. But France, when he speaks of France and, 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 and Spain, all I can think about is the heirs of Henry Turner when Spain gave the Louisiana Purchase, quote, unquote, the neutral strip to Henry Turner, the family of Henry Turner. And that's what we have today. They've been to court all the time, the Moors, and won their their case with the Moor, with the with the with the uh, Supreme Court that all of that land, approximately six hundred uh, thousand acres of land, I don't, it's a big number, belonged to the Moors. So, you know, I, I, what he was running made a lot of sense, but I'm not that familiar with that era of time. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and also we have someone in the chat room that's telling us that um, ISIS, you know, the, yep. the the group which is, is Israeli Secret Intelligence Service, and that uh, Ebola is is connected with the government. Ferguson is connected. All of that is they testing for the martial law. That's what they're yes. saying. Yes. And that that reminds me, if you don't have another caller, I I got a paragraph that I was looking for, and I found it. I just want to run this. Go ahead. And we'll get back. Okay. Okay. The chairman of the convention, which was George Washington, summarized the raging debate on how to perpetrate slavery of the Moors with this statement, quote, if we would agree to take the fezes and the turbans off the Moors' heads, and remove the sandals from their feet and enforce it with severe punishments and to also swear a death oath between ourselves to religiously and faithfully not to allow anyone to teach the Moorish children whom they really were or who their forefathers were 
the only and only allowed the Moorish children to be taught that they were truly Negroes, black people, and colored folks. George Washington stated that 200 years from today, about 300 years now, and the Moorish people would not know, he said, 200 years from today, the Moorish people would not know their nationality nor the national name of their forefathers. Also, they would not know from whom, which land or ancestors that they are descendants from. The meeting adjourned with a consensus that that would secretly meet again October the 14th, 1774, at the Pennsylvania State House, which later became known as Independence Hall. Hmm. So I'm saying to you, Bev, from that information that I read today, this was planned hundreds of years ago. Whether it be true or not, we are living it today. You don't have to argue with me about where did you get that, Ron, and and I don't believe they did that. All that, I don't even want to hear that. All I want to talk about is our condition today and why no one wants to talk about nationality. Do you know that our leaders, our so-called leaders, y'all's leaders, won't even mention the word nationality. They won't mention the word freedom. You see what I'm saying? They mentioned rights. We have civil rights. Okay? Europeans don't mention civil rights. Has anyone ever asked why? Because civil rights don't pertain to anyone with a nationality. Because they are registered as human beings. Let's call them that. Human beings. We're not registered as that. We're registered as property of United States of America. You do. Mm, right. And you know what? I'm reading here in the chat room and uh that uh shepherd that was on a minute ago. Uh he's yep. got a quote in here where the constitution, the word <laughs> con is in front of it. Uh continental, the word con is in front of it. Congress the word con is in front of it. Con. Continent, the word con is in front of it. So that's good. Wow. That, that is good. That, yes. that is so. That yes. is exactly what is going on. That was is that exactly. from Greg? Was that from that yes, guy? Yes, Greg? yes, yes, yes. He's and on the money. Some, yes, and then someone else is saying that, um, oh, and Greg is also saying that Christopher equals Chris Offer. Christopher Columbus, yes. Yes, and then, yes. And yes. someone else is saying that Ebola is not a virus, it's a poison that they're putting out. Yes. Now, I want to say something. What I just read, Beth, mm -hmm. now, think about this for a minute. This is kind of far out there, and I haven't given it research to back it up yet, but it's, it's in my gut. The reason that we're having... Ron? Africa, the reason we're having problems today is because they do not want us to understand Islam. Now, I know when you mention Islam, Christians, they get an attitude, so I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not going there. But I'll say this to you, and I know you were Catholic. You mentioned that you were Catholic, yeah. and, I, and, and I was born in a Christian home, and one thing that we have in common as black people is we believe in a creator. Definitely. Okay? We, I don't care what we call this thing called religion. We all believe in a creator. The problem starts when we try and, or better yet, when they try and put something between us and the creator. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. So you got, you got, I don't know that much about Catholicism, but you got old Mary in there somewhere, somewhere that they worship. And over mm -hmm. here with Christianity, you got old Jesus over here they worship. All of these are symbols that were placed between our soul and our creator. Correct. Islam, the true meaning of Islam is to submit to your creator. That's it. Mm -hmm. All of this chopping off heads and killing women and 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 all that garbage that they put in the papers, it has nothing to do with us. 
But now that we're fighting for our freedom, go back to what I just read. They took a blood oath that they would never let us get back to our true nationality. So they got to do things. Now, we got a lot of people out there, even that, that, that Greg that called in. Let mm-hmm. me just call him, in all positive sincerity, a white boy. He sounded like he was white, and I'm just going to go with that. Nothing negative about it. But you can't go on that, too. And we got some of us that sound that same way. Well, it it doesn't matter. Here's my point. Here's the only reason I'm saying that. They He said he is is white. Okay, okay. And I'm not saying it on a negative note. Greg, I'm telling you that you're waking up, and that scares the hell out of them. You and I are not enemies. You came in and told exactly what I've been trying to tell the people. You're suffering just as much as I suffer. So if the point is that the system, these Europeans that run this thing, these people that have power, and they may be black, it may be white, we don't know. But those international bankers that run all this trash have a major problem because people are waking up. And we need to understand that and understand that they're doing everything they can. They're even talking now about banding all trips, airplanes that come out of Africa. I heard them talk about it on a, right. on a, a red, a red uh, right wing station today. Mm-hmm. And then they got the nerve to say, well, you, you're not, uh, Obama won't play ball. He won't do what we say. Wait, 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 Ron. Hold on. We have like three minutes left of the show. So for those, you can call in at 347-215-8041, and you will still be able to hear us over the phone. Okay, go ahead, Ron. Okay. All right. They are, they are talking about Obama now that he does not want to uh, uh, negotiate. I've heard Obama stand up and say, whatever you Republicans want, bring it to the table. Let's talk about it. They said, go to hell, we going fishing. We don't want to talk to you, Blackie. We through with you. They had the same meeting in 208 that George Washington had in 1774. And they vowed at that time that not to go along with him. And they took a blood oath never to agree with him. Now they in his butt talking about he don't want to negotiate. He acts like a dictator. Yes, you forced him in the corner. What else can he do? He asked you to bring your thoughts. I remember when they was pushing that uh, Obamacare. Everybody was screaming. Oh, no. So he said, okay, here's what we'll do. You bring your ideas in, and I got mine already on the table. Let's negotiate. Do you think they brought them in? No. Did you know, uh, Beverly, that the, uh, Obama's opponent in the first presidential race came out of Massachusetts? And he had Obamacare in place for about six years prior yeah. to Obama. Yeah, I heard and that. They, and nobody's saying anything about that? Now, all of a sudden, it's the worst thing that ever came on the face of the earth. So our brothers would said the, same, said the right thing. Not only do they have a fart tongue, they're a bunch of liars and a bunch of cheats and a bunch of crooks. So... Hey, I don't know what to tell you other than get your head on right, study, understand what's happening, and do what your heart tells you to do. And you, all you got to do is follow the Constitution, read it, and then read HJR 192 because everybody's in debt. HJR 192 come out of 1933, and it tells you exactly that the government will pay your bills. What else can I tell you? Oh my! And like he also, and like Greg said, most of the people on the first, second, and third echelon of these businesses have no idea what I'm talking about. So don't even argue with them. Ask them to bring the manager out. If he's an idiot, say I know you work for somebody. You do you own this place? No. Send me somebody else out here because you're the biggest idiot I ever talked to. And they hired them for that reason. They fill up the front line with, I hate to say it, well, idiot, idiots. They do it as a reason. Now, it's not a, a sin to be an idiot. That means you don't know. 
Okay. If 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 the people knew that Greg knew what he knew, Greg would not be working there. And I hope nobody heard it because he used his name. I hope he used a false name. He may be in trouble when he go back to work next week. Do you hear me? Yeah. That's how ruthless they are. So, Greg, don't be calling in running that good stuff <laughs> the way you do because you, you're jeopardizing your family and stuff. So just chill out. You can call in. Try to talk black when you call in. Hey, brother, what's happening? Something like that. <laughs> so they will come after you. Ku Klux Klan was set up for people like you. That boss that said he was a good guy, he'll put a sheet on and beat the crap out of you. And then come in the next day and say he didn't know what happened. That's what it's all about. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, Ryan, we got a couple of callers. We can take those before we leave. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Area code 773-396. Hi, Zeb. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we hear you. Hello, Zeb. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Hello. Ron. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, can you hear me okay, Ron? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, great. Go, I was just giving ahead. you a breath. I mentioned last week in regards to my ticket. Well, Ron, I called about my court date, and they told me, they said, did you know, they said, well, we sent something out for your court date. You should have that by now. And I said, well, I have not received anything. I called for that court date for that ticket. Uh, in regards to that, that that stop for a speeding ticket, I had to call yep. for a court date. And I got all my documents yes. and papers in order, just as you stated. And the part that was just really, really weird was that they said they sent something out, but I have not received anything, Ron. And I do believe it's because I put, I refused the contract with you, and I reserve my rights. I don't know what's going to happen, but my initial question is this. Once I have my court date with all of my papers, is there anything in particular that I say? Because I think it's set for November 10th. No. No. You just go in with your court papers, and when they uh, listen to what they say, remember that the judge is a is not there for to give you legal advice. They cannot right. practice law from the bench. That's number one. Number two... The police officer that shows up, if he shows up, he can only show up as a witness, not a, as a first. Who is he representing? He's representing the state of wherever you're from. In other words, okay. why would a police officer write a ticket? He's got to say because it was a, a city ordinance. He violated a city ordinance. Is that correct? I believe so, yeah. I'm asking because, you, is that correct? Because keep... Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So then you, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Then you need to ask the court, I need to talk to the city. You don't need to talk to the police officer. He's a witness. He's not a official, of what they call the holder of due course or firsthand knowledge. You want to know where did that, that ordinance come from. So the city has to show up if he's representing the city. Then you want somebody for the city to come in, put them in, and make them swear in. Now, they're not going to let you get that far, but you need to know that type of information because they're going to try and snowball you when you get in there. Okay. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that you mentioned that before. Okay, go in there with all of my paperwork and expect to face my accuser. Yes. Yes. So when the, when he when the judge asks the lawyer questions, be careful how he asks the question. Because you say, wait a minute, uh, uh, Your Honor, are you practicing law from the bench? Let let him testify. Now he will never swear in. That's the part that that's the hang up. They gonna want you to swear in, but they won't don't want him to swear in. So you want to ask the court why is that? I didn't see him. I did not witness him swearing in. So anything he says in this court is hearsay. You got to okay, remember so that. If anything I swear he says in, in, I court, should expect to swear in. Yes, they're gonna make you swear in. And if he's okay. gonna accuse you of make a, a violation, then you want him to swear in, and you want to cross-examine him. 
okay. of the conditions. I don't know what the ticket was for. You see what I'm well, saying? It was, okay, it was a speeding ticket. But here's the thing, Ron. I'm going, the police officer was coming opposite direction, saw me, swerved yep. around, walked up to me and asked for information, mm-hmm. license and registration. I had him reluctantly my license and the insurance information, and I didn't think at the moment yep. because Ron, he did not identify who he was first and foremost. So he offers, he hands me this offer. I say I refuse, and then he went on and on and on and on. So the initial yep. thing is this, Ron. The initial, the initial thing is this. Um, I challenged that ticket just as you stated. I have not had a court date yet in the mail. Called in. Now I have the court date because they told me what day it was. Okay. So yep. going in there, going in with all my paperwork. Let me okay, tell you. Yep. Let me tell you why you didn't get it in the mail. Because they can't put out a warrant for your arrest until you're in default. So they never tell you about the first court date. They only wait, and the ticket will double because you're in default since you didn't show up for the first one. Wow, well, trying to make That's me be, you know, miss it, huh? Yes, 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 yes. Son of a gun. Now, I, I can tell you this. When you go down there for that first one, I bet you uh, uh, nine out of ten times the, the cop ain't going to be there because you ain't supposed to show up. I got a strange feeling he won't either, Ron. I'm telling you. So you might as well go down there. Now, what date do you, did they say it was? They said November 10th. What? Okay. And we're in. Okay. You got time. We're in October. You got time to write. I tell you what. Email me, and I'll, and I'll give you some more information. But Ron, meanwhile, you look know. up. Go ahead. Go ahead. What? Meanwhile, look up special invitation appearance. Special invitation appearance. Google that. Special invitation appearance. Yes. Yes. Beverly, Ron, you guys, I swear to God. You know what, Ron? You need to be the freaking president, I swear. And you know what? As far as you, Beverly, I told you, you need to be here in Chicago where Oprah was because we need some oh, real baby. people here. Don't you know? I'm, don't I'm, you know? Listen, do you remember Martha Mitchell? Does that name ring a bell with you? Not offhand, no. Martha. All right. Martha Mitchell was back married to John Mitchell, who was part of the Watergate that was cheating and stealing. Now does it ring a bell? Do you remember Watergate? She might be yeah, young, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I remember. I, now it was in the '60s or the early '70s, but I'm 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 up on politics. But go ahead. All right. Martha was so mad at John because she wanted a divorce from his punk butt. She told him that she would come in and testify against him of the crap that he was doing. She got on the plane from Pennsylvania to come in Chicago to testify. And the plane fell out of the air, sister. Wow. I can only laugh, but I, I don't want to start crying. They they killed all them people to stop her from testifying against Richard Nixon and Watergate. So you telling me to come in Chicago, the biggest, crookest state in the union? <laughs> uh, no, 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 they I'm not. The I'm just saying black that press, the black it would duck, definitely uh, be a refreshing thing, knowing that we got truth yeah. to power right where we really, really need it. Now, uh, the only thing I'm just giving uh, accolades from, because I, if, if it ain't for you and Robert X, man, I really don't know where I'd be at. I'm going to tell you something. The class that I'm taking right now for construction I swear that my class calls me a conspiracy theorist, and and when I start yes. spitting the stuff at you, where I'm getting my stuff from, the teacher ain't never yep. heard of a straw man. But that's, that's right. a whole other story. <laughs> the, Ron, the, right. teacher is a, the teacher has never heard of a straw man. The teacher hasn't. That's right. But that's a whole other that's argument, right. and I'm not about to get into that. I'm just going to stay Oof. true to what I have to do. So, okay, I'm going to email you, you and wait for that information. And uh, I yes, thank you, Ron yes. and Beverly. I thank you so much, Beverly. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And uh, Robert X will be on Sunday, this Sunday and Monday. I'm 
I'm going to text him as soon as I'm done with you guys and tell him I cannot wait to hear his voice. I miss him. Uh, all right. Thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she think I'm going to come in. They killed the first. Washington was the first black mayor they had. They killed him eating apple pie. Right. But, but I mean, you are already in Chicago, so they can hear you over the airway. I know. I know. I know. We, uh, we have another caller, 804-836. 804 Yes, uh, once again. I called in earlier. Peace so, to you. I'm following up on a different question. And I know it's not necessarily the form for it, but just understanding everything that went down from the Continental Congress to we are now, Big Ron Martell Bay. What morals yes. were complicit in the plight of establishing the United States of America? <laughs> Obviously, there had to be some. There had to be some agents out there. I mean, what do we? Yeah, I know man. This, yeah. Like said, I know it's not the forum for it, but on a superficial level. No, that's okay. Address, that's okay. That's okay. The question's got to come up. Now, I'm going to tell you, man, and I don't. Let me say it. Let me think for a minute how I can say this. You had a dividing line called the Allegheny Mountains. Look up the Proc the Royal look this look this word this up. The Royal Proclamation Line. The Royal Proclamation Line of sixteen sixty three. The King of England, which was in New York, said that any European that crossed that Allegheny, he gonna be shot. Stay on that on the east side of the Alleghenies, where there were blacks and Moors that was on the east side. We have always fought against each other. I I read where the European was created for the sole purpose right. of keeping us from fighting each other. I don't know how to say that to you in any other way, but I'm laying it on you. Elijah Muhammad right. said, if you study who you are as an individual, you'll have to tie a string around your finger to remind you that the European is here because he knows that your knowledge is so powerful that it sets up a radiation type zone and he can't come in that zone. So now you take that and do with it what you want. Them people that was on that other side was on a different go round. Now, right. let, me, let me hang something else on you. If you look up George Washington's letter, Google this, George Washington's letter to the Sultan, the Moorish Sultan, S-U-L-T-A-N. I'm a rock. I've had, I got that letter. He told the, the Europeans, asked the Sultan, first of all, they apologized because they didn't have money to pay him for letting them come on our land but I'm going to pay you because we just formed a new government. All of this is in the letter, signed by George Washington. I ain't making this up. Right. He asked the sultan, we need some su some subjects, some slaves to help us build this dynasty so we can pay you. You know what the sultan told him? Take them, <laughs> Take them wars on the other side of the Allegheny because they ain't worth a shit anyway. Right, 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 right. right so, so, so this was one more telling on the uh, east side, yes. telling the west to go, yes. don't mess yes. with us, go mess with the west yes. side. Yes, yes. Okay. There were plenty of wars between the nations. See, I go yeah. back to granny. Your grandma, if you had a fight, I don't know how old you are, but if you had a granny, I'm 73. My granny, if there was a fight between me and somebody, granny would solve that fight by going to the family and telling them yes, no, or maybe so. Right. That's the same way it was back in the day. There was no killing, murdering, and that type of thing. Granny stopped all of that kind of stuff. Now, there were fights. There was disagreements. There was stealing and, and looting and stuff like that. But as far as murder, it didn't, create, it didn't start to the European came over here. So I'm saying all that to say to you, I'm not trying to make excuses, but we were fighting each other as nations of right. people. And there right. were hundreds of thousands of nations living in El Morocco. 
Right. When you see the words of of of, of, of con- articles of confederation, Europeans try to act like that's what he came up with. No, he didn't. Right. We had articles of confederation cost them Iroquois. If you read the Constitution of the Iroquois, it'll tell you that they set up these these confederations so that they could defend themselves with more than one nation of, of quote unquote Indians in order to fight off them other ones that kept starting some crap. Right. You just get it? like just like just like Kemet, where like the Hicksos, the Hicksos were melanated too. When we were in yes. Kemet, Nubia, Poon, whatever you want to call it, we were fighting the Hicksos, they were melanated people too, the same right. Yes, yes, yes. So you take it from there. Do some research, and then you ask yourself the question, and you'll get an answer. I'm not going to give you my answer, because there's some good brothers over there, very intelligent, very enlightened on the Maury's history. But uh, something is – something is. forget that. Right. I'm through talking to you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Carla. Thank you. I don't want to go no further. No, you can't go too far. All right. <laughs> Have a great one. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Until next week. Well, Ron, um, we are uh, past our time. And as always, yes. I appreciate you. And uh, we Oof. shall return next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.